So in this lesson, we're going to learn about the process of oogenesis and spermatogenesis. We're going to learn about the events of fertilization and also the early embryo development. By now, you've probably learned about the two types of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. And in this lesson, we're gonna learn exactly how both are involved in the production of eggs and sperm in humans in the process of gametogenesis. We're also gonna consider what happens when these two gametes then meet uh, in the fallopian tube, fuse, become a zygote, and then grow into an embryo. So first, let's look at the sperm. Now, the full name for sperm is spermatozoa. Uh, men produce about 200 million sperm in each ejaculation, but only one is needed to fertilize the egg. The structure of the sperm it is, a, is that it's a very specialized cell. It's got the tail for swimming, obviously, uh, and, but powering that tail is this sort of mid unit here, which is packed full of mitochondria uh, to produce the ATP needed to move the tail. The nucleus, which contains the genetic information, a haploid nucleus, obviously, with 23 chromosomes. And then at the head, at the tip of the head, is the acrosome, which is a specialized lysosome full of digestive enzymes used to penetrate the egg when it arrives there. Sperm are produced in the testes from puberty onwards, and they start out life as a primordial germ cell, which then undergoes various divisions to become many spermatozoa in the pro process of spermatogenesis. So, in spermatogenesis, you start with a primordial germ cell. That divides a few times first by mitosis to form spermatogonia. These grow bigger and then are called primary spermatocytes. These then undergo the meiosis, and the first division makes up two secondary spermatocytes, and then they divide again uh, to make four spermatids. Finally, those spermatids can differentiate grow the tails and become spermatozoa. An egg cell or ovum is large in comparison with the sperm. Uh, an ovum is about 0.1 millimeters uh, when the sperm is about 0.05 millimeters uh, and the egg doesn't really move. Uh, it usually has a food reserve for the initial stages of embryo growth and unlike sperm, each primordial germ cell is actually only going to result in one ovum at the end. Also in females, all the mitotic divisions have actually taken place even before birth. So when a, a woman is pregnant with a girl, uh, that baby inside her uterus actually has already done all the mitotic divisions for her eggs already. The process of oogenesis is completed uh, by a few oocytes each month after puberty starts during the menstrual cycle. The structure of the egg is that you have the cytoplasm and food store and then um, a zona pellucida which sort of surrounds the outer uh, part, the, the normal sort of cytoplasm and the membrane. So in oogenesis you start again with a primordial germ cell just like in spermatogenesis. And this divides a few times by mitosis to form oogonia. And as I said, this happens before birth. Only one grows bigger and is then called the primary oocyte. The others actually break down. So three aren't used at all. We just take one and that becomes the primary oocyte. Okay. Once a month, a primary oocyte then undergoes the meiosis divisions. The first division makes two cells that are uneven in size. The big one is the secondary oocyte, and the little one is what we call the first polar body. Now, this is actually how the eggs are in the ovary, and no further changes actually happen until after fertilization. Uh, but then the secondary oocyte divides to make the ovum, uh, whilst the first polar body divides again to make two more polar bodies. The polar bodies, though, are useless. They break down and we're just left with that final ovum at the end. So fertilization. Now, in order for an organism to sex reproduce, the gametes must meet and fuse together to form a zygote. This is 
fertilization. Now in some animals this happens outside of the body where the gametes meet, that's external fertilization. Very common in animals that live in water, but you also can have fertilization inside the body, internal fertilization, uh, which tends to be more successful um, uh, and is less wasteful. Humans carry out internal fertilization by the male delivering the sperm into the female during sexual intercourse. The sperm make their way through the cervix and the uterus up the fallopian tube, the oviduct, where they will meet the, uh, the oocyte and fertilization takes place. So here's the process of fertilization in more detail. So many sperm will reach that oocyte and the acrosomes have matured since being ejaculated. Now, as soon as the sperm touch that zona pellucida around the outside, the acrosome reaction is triggered. This happens in lots of sperm all at the same time. The digestive enzymes are released and the, they digest the zona pellucida. Uh, one sperm though will get through and make contact with the oocyte membrane. And at that point, the oocyte will complete and become an ovum. In order to stop the other sperm entering at this point, ion channels change the charge of the cell to positive rather than negative. Then a more permanent fertilization membrane forms by the oocyte releasing things called cortical granules to combine with the zona pellucida. And this keeps the sperm out. The head then moves in fully, the tail drops off, chromosomes combine to make a diploid zygote cell. So what happens in order for the embryo to develop? Well, a zygote uh, starts off life as what we call a totipotent cell. This one zygote has the ability to form any of the 210 different types of cells needed to make the human body. First cleavage occurs, and this is continuous mitosis without interface. This will happen quite a few times, uh, divisions will happen. And by day four, it is now a mass of undifferentiated cells called a blastocyst. The outer layer of this blastocyst forms the placenta, and the inner layer of cells, they can form now any type of cell in the human body apart from the placenta, because that's already happened. And so we call these pluripotent embryonic stem cells rather than the totipotent uh, cell which the zygote was. The blastocyst then sort of hatches out and then implants on the uterus wall. Further differentiation will happen and the process of embryology fully gets going.